Hello, guys. Uh, Nick, how are you? Thank you for being here with us. Uh, I don't know what time is it, wherever you are. It is 3.30 a.m. <laughs> where I am in California. <laughs> so thank you for, for the effort of being here with us. Uh, Maite, what time is it, wherever you are? So I am in La Liga regional office here in Dubai, and it's uh, 3.30 p.m. So uh, uh, a special thanks again to, to Nick for his efforts, of course. Well, guys, uh, so this is going to be exciting about uh, sp uh, speaking about monetizing fan engagement and uh, crypto sponsorships. Um, but uh, first of all, uh, we've been uh, here during all the morning speaking about La Liga, Nick, but now is a moment uh, for you to introduce uh, about DB Wallet, uh, some words so the attendants here can, can know more about you and can understand what we are going to speak about. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, thank you again for having me and, and Maite on today. Um, so Divi Labs is a tech innovator that creates world-class decentralized solutions uh, powered by blockchain. Uh, we build everything with humans in mind first. We develop solutions that solve the issues of, of usability and accessibility, um, things that frustrate the mainstream uh, when it comes to the adoption of cryptocurrency. Um, what you end up with is software and services that make crypto easy to use, faster, more secure. And I'm talking all cryptocurrencies. Um, and most importantly, we make cryptocurrency more accessible to people at all levels of skill or, or, or technical expertise. Um, everything we do is in service of our, of our mission and our vision to deliver a new paradigm for financial services. Um, one that is truly decentralized, accessible to everyone, um, and that works for everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, nice. Thank you, Nick, for this uh, brief uh, introduction, but uh, it's my turn to ask also Maite about why uh, La Liga has deepened uh, its relationship with the crypto industry. Well, I think that crypto, as well as many other uh, uh, blockchain technology uh, companies and the sports industry are getting really, really closer in the last year, in the last uh, few months. We are every day hearing about new clubs and new leagues partnering with NFTs companies. We are hearing about some athletes um, accepting crypto payments into their contracts. Uh, but I think the important thing here is to understand that uh, from, a, from La Liga point of view, this um, change is not driven by us or by the clubs or by the leagues, it's driven by uh, our billion of fans that are uh, finding a new way to get closer to their uh, favorite players, their favorite uh, clubs through crypto, through NFTs, through um, many different uh, digital assets that right now uh, are uh, on the table. So from La Liga, um, we always partner with the brands whose products and services are meaningful and are uh, relevant to our fans. We want to be not only in any country in which they are, but also with any brand uh, or with any technology or with any interest that they have. So this is very important for us. We have done our research and uh, here in the MENA region, we know that six out of 10 crypto investors in MENA are fans of uh, La Liga, are followers of La Liga. So for us, it's really, really important to uh, understand this as a new way to engage with them. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it is pretty clear, Maite, but then why DB Wallet and this project that uh, Nick is leading? Well, I think there's a clear, very clear alignment in the values that drive uh, both brands, uh, both La Liga and, and Divi. First of all, is that something that we really liked a lot uh, since the beginning from Divi is that they are really interested in delivering the most meaningful and uh, enriching activations and experiences uh, to their users, exactly like, like we do. Um, secondly, I would say it's innovation, which is at the, at the core of everything they do, again, like, like us. And the third and probably the most important things, thing is that um, some of their key pillars are uh, accessibility, social inclusion, education. And in this uh, sense, from La Liga, we are um, always trying to create a, a positive impact in, in different communities. Uh, through, for example, our grassroots programs or our uh, CSR initiative. 
And um, when we found DB, uh, it was, I mean, they are doing kind of the same and in many different communities around the world in which um, many people, many communities are finding some, some different kind of challenges that uh, crypto is trying to solve. And I think this is absolutely uh, amazing from, from our point of view. Mm -hmm. uh, big words here coming from uh, Maite, uh, Nick. Uh, I guess it's kind of responsibility when they have chosen you as, as, as the crypto partner uh, that you are now for uh, MENA region and, and other regions uh, where we have here uh, some people uh, attending this uh, conference. Um, uh, I guess that you had a, a, a very um, deeper conversation about why uh, DB and not uh, other wallets. So, so, so the question here is what sets uh, your wallet apart from others uh, on the market? I think there's a, a major challenge that DB wallet solves. See, most decentralized wallets are really complicated, difficult to use, uh, which drives people toward the custodial services. And that ultimately leads the user to give up control of their coins and, and their ownership of those coins for minor conveniences that can still be solved with decentralized technologies. Um, if, if we really want to deliver on the fundamental principles of cryptocurrency uh, and the problems it can solve, we really have to create services that not only put the user in control of their financial future, um, but also make it as easy as possible for anyone to use. And that's kind of exactly what we're doing um, by kind of lowering, or in some cases, removing the barriers to entry, um, innovating new frictionless technologies, um, delivering use cases for both the developed and the developing world. Um, you know, we end up actually being able to help people across the globe engage with this crypto economy um, and ultimately achieve financial freedom and, and inclusion. Divi's wallet is what's called self-custodial. Um, it's loaded up with a bunch of innovative features that push our promise of, uh, of, the, of the future of cryptocurrency forward, most importantly being individual control and, uh, and financial sovereignty. Um, some of the things you can do right now, start up a masternode in one click using our patent pending technology called Mochi, um, and also stake and it's as easy as swiping your finger on the phone, as easy as setting up an account or playing a song on, on Spotify. Um, we also have a number of updates coming to Divi Wallet. I think the most exciting thing coming um, really early this year is the ability to actually purchase uh, and sell cryptocurrency with fiat. So with your local currency. Um, Additionally, you'll be able to perform in-wallet crypto to crypto swaps uh, with hundreds of coins. We're going to have about 270 assets coming forth in the very near future. Um, and these, in my opinion, these features are essentially prerequisites for uh, our forthcoming bridge to another popular blockchain, Ethereum, uh, which increases our ability to interoperate across chain. Um, now that kind of that groundwork has been laid and, and the core technologies are being developed and, and implemented and pushed out, um, we can really start working with La Liga on some of our other initiatives in the DeFi space um, and start to shape our roadmap and defining features um, alongside them. And that's really exciting. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, Nick, if correct me if I'm not wrong, since I'm not a crypto expert, uh, that the concept about a self-custodial wallet is uh, at the center of the conversation uh, nowadays with many different uh, things happening <laughs> around us. Um, uh, this is one of, of the main uh, objectives uh, about DB Wallet and one of, of its main uh, characteristics, right? Absolutely. It's never been more important to take self-custody of, of your funds. Basically, there's two different Two different ways that you can hold cryptocurrency. One is a custodial service uh, where essentially the user makes an agreement with the service provider uh, that the service provider will take responsibility for storing and safeguarding their funds. Um, this in many cases is a secure mode of storage. However, it also means that the availability of the service um, and access to your money is controlled by that service provider. Whereas Divi is a self-custodial wallet um, there's no middleman actually holding the funds. We ensure that the user themselves has full control and custody over the funds and 
um, dictates how that how those funds are used. Basically, it's like the difference between giving your money to someone else to hold or holding it in your own wallet, right? Um, however, unlike a wallet that you carry in your pocket, Divi's mobile wallet is backed by mil military grade security. Um, and because of our patent, patent pending technology, um, your funds can actually earn rewards or yield as well. Uh, Maite, I think we could be uh, learning from crypto here the, the whole day and we would uh, still uh, listening to new words uh, for, for everybody in uh, exactly. this meeting coming from uh, Nick. But uh, let's uh, try to approach also the, the partnership uh, that at the end of the day is what uh, is bringing uh, us here today about a partnership between a leak and a crypto uh, wallet, a crypto company. Um, how's the approach to this uh, partnership and what does it involve? Well, we are all very excited in La Liga uh, because I think this is the uh, this partnership. We are speaking about different projects, different initiatives that are going to be 100% uh, new and innovative. Uh, we are going to be doing things that uh, I think La Liga never did before. Uh, actually, it's the first uh, crypto partnership of La Liga in uh, MENA in Asia, and it's going to be um, absolutely great. Um, we cannot disclose all these uh, innovative and new projects that we will be doing, but we can say that we will be working together in different CSR initiatives, not only in MENA, but also in, in Asia, um, looking for opportunities in which football and crypto can help to uh, different communities, as we were uh, explaining before. Second, we will be uh, creating unique content, um, exclusive experience with players, for example, in order to educate uh, La Liga fans into the uh, uh, crypto world. And of course, uh, we will be creating amazing activations in, in different uh, locations uh, in, in MENA in Asia again, regarding uh, to uh, television stadiums uh, and different kind of, of experience. Uh, and a lot more is coming. Um, I'm not sure if I am allowed to say this, but we will be ro rolling out something really, really cool for the UAE in the next two weeks, let's say. So uh, it's going to be great. Exciting. Really, really looking forward to that to happen. Uh, Nick, today with us, we have uh, federations, clubs, uh, leagues, especially. And uh, we would like you to explain them uh, what, uh, from the point of view of, of your company, uh, are looking uh, for when you go and partner with a league or a sport property? Well, I think La Liga gives us, Divi, a powerful, really, really powerful platform um, from which to engage new communities around the world and, and really deliver on our, on our mission to help people from all walks of life take control of their financial future. Um, however, creating a positive impact is uh, a critical driver right, in everything that La Liga and Divi do. Um, I think a key element to this partnership is the, is the launch pad that La Liga offers from which you get Divi's um, products into the hands of really the people that need it most. Right? I think this partnership enables the team to accelerate um, the, creative, the creation of, of real world initiatives that help some of the people in the most needed communities on the planet. It's really a remarkable opportunity for us. Mm -hmm. uh, might uh, briefly told us about something happening in UAE in the next two weeks. How do you see the future of, of this collaboration? Well, it's it's been a lot of uh, a lot of discovery and a lot of exploration. Um, as such, there's a, there's a number of avenues that we're exploring. Um, there's a lot of a lot of opportunity, I think, for potential joint partnerships with La Liga and and even La Liga's partners that that leverage our technology and theirs. Uh, to provide even deeper experiences for the fans. Um, this could be, uh, this could result in like a, a branded wallet solution for La Liga uh, that enables the fans to safely secure and store their, their NFTs or, or fan tokens, um, or even personalize their wallet uh, with their favorite team or what have you. Um, we could also enable La Liga fans to buy tickets and merchandise using crypto, um, launch exclusive promotions where fans are rewarded in their favorite cryptocurrencies, whether that be the fan tokens or, or Divi itself or Bitcoin, whatever it is. Um, I think, honestly, it's it's pretty endless. The, the possibilities are, are insurmountable. <laughs> um, and that's what's exciting because 
Divi is is a pretty young company. We're we're still very agile. We're you know five years old almost, um, and we can work with La Liga to really define our roadmap and and some of the goals around their actual needs. And whatever we do, I, I think that will always ensure that a you know the users always main control, maintain control um, and ownership of their crypto, and of course secure their financial freedom and future. Uh, exciting. Uh, Maite, um, uh, you also manage different opportunities for uh, La Liga clubs. Uh, La Liga works together with uh, the clubs uh, to build uh, uh, an ecosystem that allow uh, everybody in the sport industry to grow together. And uh, you've seen uh, different clubs also joining um, um, crypto projects. Uh, why uh, are also the clubs exploring uh, these uh, collaborations and what uh, are they finding here uh, in crypto uh, sponsorships? Well, of course, the, the La Liga clubs and all the clubs are really up to date to the uh, market trends. Um, and of course, crypto has proven to be a perfect way of uh, um, uh, mean a powerful source of income as well as uh, being uh, one of the most amazing ways to deliver unique content and to get close to the fans. Uh, same with NFTs, apart from being a, a, a source of income for the clubs, uh, they are also a way to connect and to engage with them and uh, making possible even to uh, let them make decisions into the clubs, for example. So um, definitely uh, they are um, trying to understand as well as many other leagues, as many other sports institutions, what's the best way to uh, approach uh, the crypto world and the, the blockchain uh, based technologies. Uh, to take advantage of this of this new new trend, something that I think it's really really important that we work as well with the clubs, is that since it's a totally booming industry, I think it's a more important than ever to have um, compliance and due diligence process in place. Uh, for all of these new companies that are uh, appearing. Uh, of course, in La Liga, we take this very, very seriously with all of the uh, partners, not only the um, commercial partners, but also our suppliers. And uh, this is something that we uh, take very seriously because we have a big community uh, of fans and we have a great responsibility for them to deliver the best experience and, and, and the best in general. So this is something I would like to remark, which is very important. It's always important, but now more than ever, I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, are you in La Liga convinced about uh, this crypto and uh, sport industry partnerships uh, becoming uh, a trend uh, for us, uh, for the clubs and federations that we have uh, here today? It can be something uh, interesting for them to explore. Well, I think definitely it's already a trend uh, and, and it's it's a reality already uh, from La Liga, apart from Divi, of course, that we have been speaking about in this in this session. We have been partnering with uh, uh, Sorare, for example, uh, uh, in, in the field of NFTs. Uh, we have been uh, signing as well with Socios.com uh, for uh, fan tokens as well. We have been uh, with, we are uh, doing a lot of different things with Dapper Labs for uh, different and uh, highlights or moments as we uh, as we uh, call them but uh, again um, this is not something that la liga or the the leagues or the clubs are driving the important thing here is that uh, millions of, of football fans are uh, finding a great way to or, or an additional way to get closer to these institutions to their favorite players and it's a wonderful way to, to interact uh, with them so uh, every time or any time that we have an opportunity to get closer to the fans of course we will we will have into consideration mm -hmm. Uh, thank you, Maite. I want to remind uh, everybody uh, that is attending the, the conference here with us that they can uh, address their questions to both Maite and Nick uh, through the chat. Uh, if we don't have time to answer them today or if you have uh, questions uh, in the future, you can also um, uh, ask them to us through, through ourselves, through FARA, the people at West Asian Football uh, Federation. Uh, Nick, now that you have partnered with La Liga, I don't know if you are uh, much more into the competition itself, if you are enjoying it, if you have any favorite club uh, player 
Uh, what are your thoughts about the season? Yeah, I had the opportunity to go to several games when I was in Spain, when we signed the, the partnership a couple of months ago. And um, I have gotten into it. <laughs> it's on at my office a lot <laughs> uh, on the TV in the, in the break room. Um, I've watched El Clasico, which just occurred a, a couple of weeks ago. Um, I, I grew to like Real Madrid, which maybe is a mainstream choice, but they're a really good team and they're fun to watch. So I'm, I'm sticking by it. <laughs> Perfect. So if we don't have a, any question, um, uh, we will uh, say goodbye to Maite and Nick. Nick, it's very late uh, there. So we really appreciate your, your efforts and we will... Uh, um, let you uh, live in. Uh, we have a, a question if Farah can uh, translate it since it's uh, in Arabic. Um, uh, I will let her to translate it. I will ask you one minute, uh, guys, um, since we have this translation process happening. I'm gonna let Farah to get in touch with us. Um, yes, Danielle. So the question here um, is about the NFT and uh, the costs of the NFT that sometimes might not be affordable for um, all the people around the world. Um, so what is the reasonable um, NFT prices or cost that um, can be purchased by, um, by um, the different levels of, of um, I would say, people um, that can afford it um, in the world? That was the question. Nikki, this is for there's, <laughs> there's um there's several different blockchains that enable the purchase and sale of NFTs. Obviously, the most popular one being Ethereum uh, is quite cost prohibitive at times when the network's load becomes uh, a burden on the system. That is being resolved by what what are called layer two solutions. Uh, for instance, Polygon is a layer two on top of Ethereum that enables um, much more um, cost efficient transfers and, and minting of NFTs. Um, there's also specific blockchains just for NFTs. So La Liga has partnered with Dapper Labs, which uses the Flow blockchain, which is specifically enabled for uh, cost efficient NFTs. And these solutions continue to develop and, and come forth. Um, I think the beauty of of what we do at Divi is that we're a software developer, right? So we're able to leverage the most efficient technologies at any given time and not rely specifically on one thing. Thank you, Nick. And thank you, Mohanad, for the, for the question. Uh, well, as I promised, Nick, we will let you leave uh, the call and uh, it's time to rest uh, for you. Uh, thank you for being here with us today. Also, thank you to Maite. Uh, we are pretty sure that exciting uh, times are coming ahead for, for both of your companies and really looking forward to uh, this partnership um, to, to do their, their next steps and, and being a, a reality and uh, pretty successful. So thank you very much, uh, everybody. Also to our attendees that were here today uh, with us during the, the three, four hours that uh, we had this conference happening. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you to West Asian Food Federation members for making this happen. And uh, we are sure that we will see you again very soon with uh, much more topics about digital uh, innovation and uh, other football industry related uh, topics. Thank you very much and have a nice day. Thank you so much. Thank you.